First, the warning, then the rapid evacuation to the nearest bomb shelter, and then the slow process of picking up the pieces and rebuilding after yet another hit by an incoming Hamas grad rocket. Shockingly for many living in Israeli communities surrounding Gaza, this is becoming a way of life. I am worried since Saturday eve, uh, morning because it's, it's scary. As the latest rocket rains down on the coastal town of Ashkelon, thankfully there are no injuries again this time. As much of the media coverage in this region focuses on the suffering and destruction, relatively little attention is given to the not insignificant number of near misses, stories of miracles that take place when enemy fire fails to hit its mark. For example, despite the daily barrage of Katusha rockets shot from southern Lebanon in the summer of 2006 during the Second Lebanon War, the number of casualties and injuries in Israel was disproportionately low. Kiryat Bialik was no exception. This town, situated 12 kilometers north of Haifa, was hit by as many as 13 Katushas. In the end, not a single loss of life. The rocket hit here. There were a few of the cars all around here. All of them destroyed completely. The uh, apartments here around where all the glasses were broken down. Some of the entrance doors, some of the uh, equipment here were destroyed. Everything was down. But uh, the people, nobody was hurt here. One person was slightly hit by a piece of glass. That's all. Kiryat Shimona, one of Israel's northernmost towns, was by far the hardest hit during the Second Lebanon War. Situated only four kilometers away from the Lebanese border, this population of 22,000 was an easy target for Hezbollah's rockets. More than southern Katyushas here, there were no casualty. There were three people that were uh, injured. Direct hits by over 1,000 Katusha rockets and not a single loss of life? That would appear to be nothing short of a miracle. Jonathan Friedman, director of the Jewish agency's Zahal 9 Absorption Center, situated in the picturesque hills of northern Israel, witnessed firsthand what he believed to be divine intervention when a Katusha blasted through his office. At that precise moment, his workspace, normally buzzing with activity, was devoid of a single worker. To tell you more miracles and things like that, two of my workers walked out of this office a minute before the Katusha hit. Nobody got hit. Every single Ethiopian immigrant residing at Zahal 9 Absorption Center, adults and children alike, spared. All told, in 34 days of war, approximately 4,000 rockets were fired into Israel. Every life lost was a serious tragedy. However, the extent of injuries and casualties, numbering 43 civilian deaths in all, was to many low considering the intensity of the assault. Why were so many of the attacks unsuccessful? We feel here in Israel, it's almost like we sense when, when people throughout the world really kick in and start really praying for Israel. At a certain point, there, was, there seemed to be a shifting away from the fear that had begun to grip the people. Fears that this was going to escalate into a, into a very destructive war. There were a lot of fears at that point that Syria was going to join in with chemical warfare, and, and it could very well have happened. Is there a correlation between heightened prayer by God's people around the world and the lack of success of the attacks? I think it's very important for us to realize the power of our prayers as things heat up right now. It, it's, it's at a point again where it could explode into a huge situation. And I think sometimes it helps if we picture Satan's purposes almost like he's launched a rocket which is coming with his purposes and plans to, to make a major conflict at this particular time, and that our prayers come up like another type of rocket that protects and that intercepts that rocket and stops his plans. And it seems clear to me that in the scriptures that believers who pray in faith can intercept and even cut off the plans of the enemy. We pray for the peace of Israel. Nous prions pour la paix d'Israël. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Nous prions pour la paix de Jérusalem. We commit to praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Right now, would you begin to be that Ruth that's friends with Israel, and you begin to say, I turn my heart. So I think in the same way to today, we need to be aware that our prayers really do release angelic armies into action 
they do affect what is happening in the heavenly. So it's an exciting thing. There are no limits and limitations in prayer because it's, it, it is a, a spiritual thing. We can pray right now and it can be having an effect 3,000 miles away.